Welcome to part two of the History of Wake Forest University Medical School presentation. The year 1941 was big for the medical school. In June, it moves from the town of Wake Forest to Winston-Salem, and instruction begins in September. Try to picture moving an entire school, especially a medical school, with all the special equipment. Dr. Herbert Hadley built the laboratory and examination tables for physiology, and thankfully they all fit into one van for the move to Winston-Salem. So furniture and people descended upon Winston-Salem, including nine faculty members. Dr. Tinsley Harrison was one of those, professor of internal medicine from 1941 to 1944, who said upon moving to Winston-Salem, I'm in Winston. I like the town. I like the school. I like the opportunity. Apparently, Dr. Harrison coming with the school was a good move because in the short three years he was here, one alum said that he threw us right into publication and research. So Bowman Gray School of Medicine joins with North Carolina Baptist Hospital to become the 69th academic medical center in the country. Classes started on September 10, 1941 for the 42 first year and 30 second year students in the amphitheater located in the James A. Gray building, which is the original building of the medical school. Here's the amphitheater on opening day. In 1942, 63 Winston-Salem physicians accepted Dr. Carpenter's 1939 offer to the Forsyth County Medical Society to join the Bowman Gray faculty. Twelve of these people moved their offices to the school and became members of the newly established Private Diagnostic Clinic which was organized as a group practice to care for private patients. Dr. Wingett Johnson, Dr. J.P. Rousseau, and Dr. Arthur Valk were some of these 12 who moved their offices to Bowman Gray. Dr. Johnson, who had practiced medicine in Winston-Salem since 1910, was chief of the private diagnostic clinic. Seventeen years later, in 1959, the private diagnostic clinic becomes the Department of Clinics, one of several name changes. Guidelines were established for the professional practice plan in which faculty contributed a portion of their clinical income to the school. The PDC is what is known today as Wake Forest University Physicians. Also in 1942, World War II required training for more physicians. Bowman Gray participated in the Army Specialized Training Program and the Navy V-12 Program. Under these programs, a new medical class is accepted and another one graduated every nine months. Here are some students practicing. The year 1943 marks the first graduating class of Bowman Gray School of Medicine. Three members of the class make three of the four highest grades on the state medical board examinations. While students are attending classes and doing rotations at Bowman Gray, Grayland Estates comes into the picture in 1945 when it is deeded to the school by the Gray brothers. The deed includes funds to renovate the mansion into a 30-bed neuropsychiatric facility called Grayland Hospital. There was also discussion about moving the medical school to Grayland. When the psychiatry department moved and hospital closed, Grayland operated as the Grayland Children's Center in the 1960s. It was a school for children with developmental disabilities. Skipping a bit to the 1950s, because it is significant for today, the medical school received approval of federal grant programs in 1957. This means that research is paid mainly through the National Institutes of Health. Since the school was in line to receive federal grant money, the expansion of the James A. Gray Building in 1959 was appropriate. The new space housed research support services, Coy C. Carpenter Library, classrooms, and a student lounge. This shows the entrance to the medical school. While the research is expanding at the school, so is its curriculum. The first PhD level program at Wake Forest is anatomy in 1961. Physiology and Pharmacology follow in 1962, along with Biochemistry in 1963 and Microbiology in 1964. The Division of Graduate Studies in 1961 was administered by the medical school faculty through a standing committee of four supervising members, Dr. Norman Sulkin, Professor of Neuroanatomy, and Dr. Richard Burt, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, were two members of the standing committee. 
Dr. Thomas Clarkson was chair of the Department of Comparative Medicine from 1965 to 1997. He expanded the monkey colonies at the campus and a little over 10 years later, in 1975, the school is named a national resource for the production of monkeys for research purposes. This concludes part two of the history of Wake Forest University Medical School presentation. To hear more about the school's history, please view parts one and three. For further information, contact archivist Diane Johnson in the Dorothy Carpenter Medical Archives.